Martha was an average dog. She went and and. But when she ate some alphabet soup, then what happened was bizarre. On the way to Martha's stomach, the letters lost their way. They traveled to her brain, and now she's got a lot to say. Now she speaks. How now, brown cow? Martha speaks. Yeah, she speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks. What's a caboose? What are we eating again? Martha speaks. Hey, Joe, what do you know? My name's not Joe. She's not always right, but still that Martha speaks. Hi there. She's got a voice. She's ready to shout. Martha will tell you what it's all about. Sometimes wrong, but seldom in doubt. Martha will tell you what it's all about. That dog she needs. Testing one two. Hear her speak. Martha speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks and. Likes a wet dog. No one wants anything to do with a dog that's wet from being out in the rain or retrieving a stick from a lake. Stop! Look how she wanders around the crowded pub tonight, going from one person to another, mm -hmm. hoping for a pat on the head, a rub behind the ears, something that could be given with one hand without even wrinkling the conversation. Mm -hmm. But everyone pushes her away, some with the knee, others with the sole of a boot. Even the children who don't realize she's wet until they go to pet her, push her away, then wipe their hands on their clothes. And whenever she heads towards me, I show her my palm and she turns aside. Oh, stranger of the future, oh, inconceivable being, whatever the shape of your house, however you scoot from place to place, no matter how strange and colorless the clothes you may wear, I bet nobody there likes a wet dog either. I bet everyone in your pub, even the children, pushes her away. That was awesome. That's exactly what it's like to be a dog. I thought you'd like that. We're studying poetry this week. Plus, we have to write one ourselves. Ugh. Hang on. That was a poem? Yep, it's by Billy Collins. But it didn't rhyme. I thought poems had to rhyme. You know, like songs, only without all that annoying singing. Well, a poem is like a song that you speak instead of sing. Some poems rhyme, some don't. The most important thing about poems is that words and poems are chosen for how they sound and what they mean. That's confusing. If a poem doesn't rhyme, how do I know it's really a poem? If I may interject, Miss Klusky read us this thing by a guy named Kenneth Koch. He says that a sign that says, no dogs allowed on the beach, isn't poetry. Okay, so far. But a sign that says, no dogs or logs allowed on the beach, no poodle however trim, no dachshund unable to swim, is a poem. Duh, because it rhymes. Hmm, you've got a point. But it also uses rhythm and interesting words, just like the poem about the wet dog. Cold apple, TD? Sure. Miss Klusky says poetry is words that sound better and mean more. Well, I'm more. More confused than ever. Well, I'll just have to read you some more poems, and then maybe you'll understand. Sounds good to me. Read away! Everyone here can read and write. The dog's in poetry, the cat's and the other's in prose. Cool. Who wrote that one? Billy Collins. The same poet who wrote the other one. Uh, a poet is a person who writes poems? Yep. Well, I have to say. That Billy Collins is one poet who really understands dogs. Wait a minute. No human understands dogs that well. <gasps> Are you saying what I think you're saying? It has to be. Billy Collins isn't human at all. He's, He's a, a dog. dog. Wait, hang on. That doesn't make any sense. Of course it does. It makes perfect sense. Look. There are billions and billions of planets in the universe, right? Right. But what is that? Uh-uh. And you know how Truman says that statistically speaking, Earth can't be the only planet with life? So by that logic, how can Martha be the only talking dog ever? Flipsoflacto, Billy Collins equals talking dog. Her mouth is moving, but no words are coming out. Behold the awesome power of truth! I'm writing a poem about Nelson. I'm thinking of writing one about my favorite drawing pencil. Uh, why does it have to be a poem? Why can't we just stick to prose? Prose? That sounds even fancier. 
prose is just plain old ordinary writing, like a newspaper. Prose is writing that's a lot like the way you normally talk. Exactly. What's wrong with prose? No rhythm, no rhyme, nothing fancy. But it's boring. If you say, I don't know, birds of a feather flock together, that's way more interesting than saying people who have similar interests tend to hang around each other. Hey, uh, this ant says he has one. The ant has a poem? Yeah, it goes... Yogurt Mountain! Forward March! Oh no! Giant Foot! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it! A dog and an ant can write poems, but I can't! I'm telling you, that dog Billy Collins has set the bar too high! Poor TD. He could really use some help with his poem. He's really struggling. <laughs> he is? <laughs> the real Billy Collins? <laughs> Well, where is he appearing? The pet store? <laughs> really? Well, maybe he can help us. Come on! <laughs> Next, I'd like to read a poem called Dog. I can hear him out in the kitchen, his lapping the night's only music, head bowed over a water bowl, like an illustration in a book for boys. He enters the room Excuse with me? such Excuse me, do you know when Billy Collins is going to read? That is Billy Collins. Oh, uh, thanks. Then he makes three circles around himself, flattening his ancient memory of tall grass before dropping his weight with a sigh on the floor. Ah, uh, this is the spot where he will spend the night, his ears listening for the syllable of his name, his tongue hidden in his... Excuse me, excuse me, everyone! Sorry to interject, but I have an announcement! This man is an imposter! Seize him! An imposter is someone who's pretending to be someone else. And this man is pretending to be Billy Collins, so call the police! <laughs> All right, where is he? Where's the real Billy Collins? Uh... I bet you have him chained up to a porch somewhere. Poor Billy Collins! Collins, where's his tail? What's that? Uh-oh. You mean he's not an imposter? Wow, I'm a blockhead. Oh, no, uh, my head isn't actually shaped like a block. I meant that metaphorically. Oh, a metaphor. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, complicated. I'll explain later. Right now, I have some apologizing to do. Excuse me? What? It's my fault. I just couldn't believe any human could know so much about how a dog feels. Coming from you, Martha, that's pretty high praise. How can you understand a dog like that? Well, I guess poetry is really about using your imagination. A lot of times, poets use poetry to imagine what it's like to be another person or creature or even nature itself. Hmm. Well, I have a friend who has lots of imagination, but he's struggling. He could use some advice. It's no use! I started a hundred poems. Listen, the... The? What? That's as far as I got. The. It's totally boring already. A. The. Buy motor oil. Hey, that's good. Oh, wait, no. That's Dad's. How can I write a great poem if I can't even write one good word? Hey, writing can be hard, T.D., and poetry is even harder than writing. Tell me about it. But, you know, the point isn't really to impress teachers or even to try to write the best poem ever. You're going to tell me it's to have fun. Exactly. But I'm not having any fun. Right now, I'd rather be sick as a dog. Or an actual dog. Dogs aren't allowed in school. Well, why not write about that? Being a dog sounds like something you feel strongly about. It could make a really terrific poem. It could? I woke up this morning curled up in a chair. I yawned and jumped down, ran a foot through my hair. 
I clicked across the floor on four furry paws. Hang on a minute. Was that really my schnoz? Was it always so long, so cold, and so wet? Was my face extra hairy? But there was no time to fret. I heard a clock strike. Late for school, dang nabbit. I hightailed it downstairs like I was chasing a rabbit. I zoomed across yards and leapt over fences. Things seemed oddly heightened, even my senses. Got to school in three minutes flat. It would have been sooner if it weren't for that cat. Then a voice cried, Hold on, stop on the double. Even with a C in spelling, I could tell this spelled trouble. Don't you know dogs aren't allowed in this school? Wow! I said, really? How awesome, how cool! I turned and zipped out before he yelled, stay! I raced down the block as free as a stray. Then, all of a sudden, crack, crash, boom! The sky sucked me and everyone else into this totally weird wormhole kind of thing. <laughs> Suddenly, we were all cavemen in an alternate reality. We all screamed, help! P.S. I wasn't a dog anymore. And then we found a television. And we went through it. The end. That was The Sadness of Not Being a Dog by T.D. Canelli, with special assistance from Billy Collins, former poet laureate of the United States. A V? I don't get it. We even had the end right at the end of the poem. And it rhymed and everything. I guess Miss Glusky didn't like that her poem ran out of poem halfway through. But hey, did you have fun? Uh, I don't know, I guess. Well, as the poet said, that's the really important thing. What poet? You. Oh, right. Come on, cheer up. I'll buy you a yogurt. Hey, hey, you guys. I just heard something weird from one of the other dogs. Have you ever heard of Walt Whitman? A poet? I love Walt Whitman. Turns out he was a giant, fluffy English sheepdog. They say he liked to chase ducks, and he would write a poem whenever you scratched his belly. Cool. cool. Wanna throw sticks? Great. Yeah. A bee? Huh, I still don't believe it. I'm home. I guess I've learned my lesson. No more writing poems on my own. Hey, got anything for me? A poem? Great. Forgetfulness. Hmm, well, if you say so. Thanks, Billy. Good boy. Similes and metaphors are colorful ways of comparing things. I'm as hungry as a wolf. Good simile. Huh? A simile is when you compare two things by using like or as. Okay, ask me how I'm like a bear. <laughs> a metaphor is when you compare things without saying like or as. For instance, if you say, I'm an early bird, or TD's idea is half-baked. Baked. Or if you say, I have a beef with you, you're not actually talking about meat. Oh, but I am. I'm talking about meat. This is no metaphor, Helen. This is dinner time. Oh, you're right. Time is flying. That's a metaphor, right? Because time doesn't actually have wings and all. Right. Martha, you're a sponge. Getting fed around here is a trial. To dig up some more fun boards and games, visit pbskids.org or check out your local library for the Martha Speaks books.